David Dude, top of the arc. Here's Pip, guarded by Gillespie. Steps back, spins, fires! Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Dish Sports. I'm Ben Bellotti here with my co-host Matt Marasco and Robbie Cannon. Guys, how you doing tonight? You know, Ben, I can I couldn't be any better personally. I got for the first time since March, I was back on the campus of Providence College. So like I was only there for 40 minutes, but it felt amazing. Yeah, yeah, we'll be going back Sunday. Uh just got a little you know, precautionary test first. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. You know, uh, we saw we saw the basketball team working out. They're looking good, looking strong, looking uh, looking like David Duke might have put on a few inches. Mm-hmm. So a lot of good things to look forward to if we have college basketball. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm. Uh, I just. I mean, I couldn't be in a better mood this evening after. Just, it's a magical place that we were at this afternoon, and I was just. I'm so happy that we'll be there for. Hopefully, the like foreseeable future. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not just a couple weeks. But. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Matt, how you doing tonight? Pretty good, pretty good. I, uh, you know, it's a great time to be a Boston sports fan right now. You get the Bruins up one nothing in the series. You get the Celtics completing a sweep, uh, and yeah, and yeah. Cam Newton supposedly looks pretty good in training camp based on what they're mm-hmm. telling us, which is limited because apparently they have new rules yeah. now. They can't report anything, but not to yeah. derail the whole order of everything we uh already talked about but um did you guys see julian edelman put out you know a little instagram post or a little twitter post with uh him and yeah. cam newton as superman and batman it got me fired up i was ready to go i'm like i had no expectations for the patriots to go far and then i saw that post and i was like they have jewels they're fine we're fine everything yeah exactly it's like that picture with bill belichick where he looks all serious and it's just like the nobody died thing that's it oh, nobody yeah. died Nobody died. We're fine. We'll be you know, fine. You know what my favorite Bill Belichick picture is? What? Does you want to take a guess? No, just no. What is it? <laughs> no. All right. What is it? Um, it's the picture of him just sitting there, just sipping his orange juice. Oh, that's okay. A great, okay. It's, that's it's great. All, it's all time. It's just like classic. You want to know my favorite Bill Belichick video? Yeah. Him. It's him. Uh, I think they were in Detroit. And he, the two little kids, like, wanted a high-five, and they were legit, like, right there. Like, couldn't have been any more in front of him, and he just walked right by him. And, like, someone put some good music over it. It's, like, WWE music. Oh, it was on the <laughs> Best video ever. I love him so much. We're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got we got Bell, Jules, Cam. I, I really do – I'm coming around on Cam being good. But, um, I don't know. He's good we'll if see. he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And if he has some – uh control with how the ball where the ball goes so he knows where the ball's going that's a, yeah that'd be useful a big that's part a of big it if with him that's a yeah. big if. and it's a you know it's a arguably you know the most important thing of the the quarterback position it's knowing where the ball's gonna go yeah <laughs> good point it's a good yeah, point. point it's a great point by me um, i mean we're talking we're talking nfl how about you and i ben we know we firsthand today we got tested for covid you know wasn't as bad as we thought or at least me. I thought they were gonna shove something like way up my brain. No, we did. Crying. We did the self-administered test. It wasn't. It wasn't bad at all. You know, it wasn't you know bad. What it, it was. I have one complaint. I have a complaint. The guy. You know, they're all about sanitation, uh, sanitary, being sanitary, and all that. And uh, he just has me put the tissues I'm about to blow my nose with right on the dirty table. Did he? My guy. My guy said oh. strictly. My guy said keep them in your left paw or no. hands. But I like to refer to my hands as paws. Yeah. <laughs> You're a cool guy. But um anyway, yeah. so yeah, we got tested today. The NFL yeah. has done like a bunch of tests now. I can't even remember what the number was, but it was like jarring to me that I read the when I read the number. It was like would I sound like an idiot if I said it was over ten thousand tests? <laughs> no. And the other thing too, no. speaking of NFL tests, how about all the tests, all the false positives? Mm, the mm. Jets had a bunch of false positives, and I forgot somebody else did too. But yeah, but in the end, after all the false positives, because they were false, 
they had they've had the, I don't think they've had a positive case yet, which is just absolutely incredible if you think about. It. I don't think they've had one, but there are guys that are um on like the I don't know what they call it like in the NFL, but like there's guys like like Gardner uh, Minshew is on mm. he was on a list for like he might have it, but they're not sure or like he wasn't like I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure he might have had it. I would, Maybe, love to okay. know story. I would love to know the story of how Gardner Minshew got COVID. I feel like it just must be unbelievable. It must I don't be- think he had it. I think it was just precautionary and, like, he was seriously ill. But um, the story that led people to believe that he had COVID. Yeah. Is what I, I would love to The story with Gardner Minshew is just yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Like, I mean, I didn't think we'd be leaving the show off with NFL talk, but, like, I'm kind of happy we did. I mean – yeah, we're, the we're Pats, here. Newton, and now the now the test the test came back looking good, and honestly, how far are we? Do you get when does the season start? Like, I feel like I should be doing a fantasy football draft like within the next yeah. week or two. Yeah, you know? September Our 10, right? Yeah, September 10 kickoff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got I got to do my research. I'm I don't just show up to fantasy football leagues yeah. without without to lose. I got to do I got to get hit in the books. Not it's an not intent. to brag. Not to brag, but I won uh, our floors fantasy football league last year. Um, so, got a boy, Benny. There you do, go. Do you remember who who was your best player? Who who brought you to that championship? God, <laughs> isn't that the way it always goes? Too, I put in <laughs> hours and hours of research. I go get like the the Good Morning or no uh, the uh, USA Today like fantasy football breakdown like book that they put out every year. Home my eyes, ESPN rankings, and every year I finish like third. It's unbelievable. It's like, oh, it really is. It really is. I had Mike Thomas last year. He was like the baddest dude in the league, like breaking records left and right. And then championship round, he was like, he like missed the only game of the year. Or like he sat in half. I was just, I lost it. That's brutal. So, Benny, you in the championship? Yeah. Came in second. That's tough. Nick Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb? Yeah, he was on the team. That's yeah, go get him again this year. He's gonna only, have another good year. Only, only guy I remember on the team. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, fantasy, fantasy football <laughs> starting up again. Uh, getting ready for that. Pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I don't remember if we t- if we've talked about it before. Is the NFL have a plan for like bubble or no bubble yet? Uh, th- I think their plan right now is to have people playing in stadiums, just a like, normal like MLB. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's very similar to the MLB. Um, and I don't like that. And the, hold on, the best the best part about it is every right now, like each owner is coming out one by one and saying like within like a couple days of each other, like we're not gonna have fans for the first like four games, and then the next owner is like, all right, we're not gonna have them for the first three. <laughs> like they keep trying to one up each other. I don't, it's like an arms race. I so love it. who who's gonna be uh, the first team to bring them back? Who do we think that that's gonna be? Cowboys. Jerry I, Jones could, I was going to say the exact yeah. same thing. I, yeah, that's yeah. a great call. No it's doubt. Cowboys. He might He might have some there opening day. <laughs> Honestly, I think, I think, like, maybe, like, I can see, like, a team like the Jets doing it or the Giants just because they're such messes of an organization and they're just like, oh, this will be great. And then it just won't just because that's where they are. But I 100% think it's going to be the Cowboys first. Yeah, it's got to be Jerry it. Jones. I could see the Chargers doing it or allowing fans into the stadium because they know no one's going to go anyway. They're just like, ah, like, we're not going to ban them. <laughs> it's only a half dozen people here when, you know, there's no pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's dead on. Um, But no bubble. I think that's weird because we haven't gone – there hasn't been more than one day where all 30 MLB teams have played a game. And that's – you know, partially it's due to rain delays, but mostly it's due because of – COVID protocols or a player testing positive for COVID. So, I mean, they're already talking about a postseason bubble for the MLB. Why wouldn't the NFL just make a plan and do a bubble? Because the two bubbles that are going in the other major sports, the NHL and the NBA, are going stronger than ever. And I know there hasn't been positive tests in the NFL yet, but, I mean, they're really not traveling at all. They're staying in one place. And, I mean, just look what's going on in the MLB. Why wouldn't you want a bubble? Just to play it safe. My one reason that the uh, that it's tougher for the NFL to do one, in my opinion, would be that there's there's a lot more guys on an NFL team, one yeah. on the team, but like two, even like the necessary staff is like so much bigger than these other sports. 
And so I just feel like it, it'd have to be one giant bubble. <laughs> yeah, Rob, you hit the nail on the head. I just did some quick math. I believe there's 30, 30 or 32 NFL teams. 32. Hold on. I did the math wrong. Well, so now there are, there's so there there are over sixteen hundred active NFL players at any given time, six uh, one thousand six hundred sixty four. You can't put and that's just players. That doesn't include like you said, coaches, staff, training staff, you know, nutrition, whatever the case may be. It'd be like a town. It'd be well, how my, many? That's like my yeah. town population. How many people yeah, exactly. are in the NBA bubble? Oh, so many less. I mean, if you think about it, there's like 15 dudes in a team, 15 to 18 probably. And but then yeah. they only have like six coaches. They right. can take they can take uh, like one or two significant others with them as well, though. Now they can. Once, once they caught that number down again, so they're not going to allow the significant others or people that they are able to figure out how to make it look like they had a relationship with before <laughs> this. They, they're not going to do that until I think there's only what? eight teams left or four teams left. I think it's the conference semifinals. I think only until there's four teams left. Well, what about the NHL? There's a lot of – there's got to be a lot of trainers and coaches, and there's a lot of players on the hockey team. I know a football team is bigger, but, I mean, they have a lot of guys. And their, their bubbles also – they're playing in a couple different places. They weren't like the NBA, like concentrated all in one place. Yeah, I think the if the NFL were to try it, they would need to do something like that. Why? They, like, have honestly, they would realistically need like three or four bubbles. I don't see why you can't just go have everyone play in California. It could be doable. I mean, there's there's definitely spots where you could do it. I mean, the, just spots where there's multiple stadiums all, you know, around each other. You just need like three or four or not even, and then just stagger the games. I mean, part of it too is it's also a big ask for players to play an entire season in a bubble. That's a seven, 17 weeks in a bubble would be a long time. There, it would be less than any other season. What's up? It, it's less games than any other season. Yeah, it's less. Yeah, but the, in the NFL, you you can't, you have to do it a week a week between. No, every I know. Game just because of wear on your body. Right, be there for you, seventeen you, weeks at least. I mean, Tuka Rask got bored in the bubble in, in three or four weeks. You can't <laughs> have these guys go seventeen weeks in in a bubble, and then you make the playoffs. Teams are gonna get buys. What are you gonna do on the buy? You have two weeks to sit by yourself, and you know. I, it's too much of an ask, and I think that's why MLB didn't do it too. When you have to play a, you know, a whole season, or you know, it's going to be an extended three, four month period of time. It's too much to do in a bubble. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I just don't. I mean, just look at what's going on in the MLB. There's been two outbreaks uh, since then: the Reds, the Mets, the Cardinals. Um, yeah, but there's no long road trips in the NA, in the NFL. So, like, those true. guys, you know, they're on road trips and they're out there. Yeah, for but it's the most trips. contact out of any of these. This, Sure, but you're, you're going to fly in, you know, stay overnight, play your game, fly back the next day. It's not like you're going to be in a city for three or four days in a hotel. Yeah, I know. I just, I just, you know, the NFL is just notorious for not caring about player safety. So, I just yeah. thought maybe they'd want to go over the top with this one, but. I understand it's a struggle, and you know you guys brought up some pretty good points on why you wouldn't want to do it. So it's not but, even that I, it's not even that I wouldn't want to do it. It's just that it, it's too logistically you can't. It's, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Um, oh, I mean, you you guys want to move from one potential bubble to another bubble that is going well? The actual okay. bubble, yeah. Let's do that. Let's yeah. go right. You're talking NBA, I'm assuming. Hmm. All I'm gonna say is 76ers. Blow them up. Blow them up. Blow them up Team baby. over. Dynasty, or if you want to even call it a dynasty. Because Philly people were calling it a dynasty. It's over. It never even started. And they should They should be – they're going to trust the process. Starts all over again. We'll see another young guy in like 10 years. It's over. Trade them all. I love it. I absolutely love it, dude. Yeah, they just, just fired their head coach. We blew them up. up, dude. Embiid. I was worried about them running everything through Embiid. I'm like, oh, Embiid's a force. Like – Simmons, I'm a big anti-Simmons guy. I think he's bad. He's a bad fit for that team. He's a bad fit for Embiid, and he's a liability because it allows a defender to just sag off and just hang out in the paint because he can't shoot. So, like, oh, shit, with, without him, like, they'll be able to spread the floor or whatever. Didn't matter at all. Embiid did everything he could, kind of. And it just, I mean, Tatum looked unbelievable. Brown when it's winning time at the end of games. Kemba, Kemba, that's the big one, Robbie. Kemba stepped up when we needed him, dude. Kind of quiet throughout most of the bubble. The knee looks great. He was dropping buckets, and he's back to the guy that we're like, oh, like coming into the season, we're, he was quite—he was arguably the best player on the team. 
Tatum and Brown blew that out of the water, but he's back looking like he could be the best player on a team that makes a deep playoff run. <laughs> he's got to be that guy, too. He's got to be that guy. Matt, I mean, you didn't – right there, every single word that you just said, you probably said like 200 words there. I don't even know. I agreed with every single one of them down to down to the comma. I mean, oh, that man. was incredible. Love that. That was, that was such a well-said just masterpiece. I couldn't agree anymore. Like, we're in such a good spot right now. Like, I love it. it don't get me wrong. I, I, I love Toronto's team. I think it's, it's going to be a tough, a tough, uh, tough series next series. Yeah, you, I think you scared Toronto's, of the Raptors? I think the, Ra- the Raptors scare me more than the Heat or the, uh, or the Bucks. Well, who, so were you, we weren't nervous at all about the 76ers. I was a little bit. <laughs> yeah, more than, so who are you worried about? Who, going into the series, you worried more about the Raptors or the 76ers? I'm gonna say the Sixers just because I'm. There's such a shit. There's just such a bad matchup. Like on paper, that should not have happened. You look at all the big guys I have. You run out Horford and Embiid. These talented offensive big men, they can go create havoc. Yeah, Toronto's a really deep team. Yeah, they have really good guard play and Pascal Siakam's good, but with no um, who hurt for them? Somebody sprained ankle. So Snow, who's um, uh, Lowry. Lowry. Let, me, let me say this. Lowry, let me say Lowry, this. Lowry, has, Lowry has a sprained ankle, and I think we match up better with them. I think that we yeah. have the perimeter defenders to shut down their perimeter guys. Tyus can bang down low with Siakam. I'm, I'm not as worried about Toronto. All right. I like that. Um, you made me think of something or prove, maybe partially prove something that I was thinking about. For one of the better teams in the NBA, are the Raptors some of the most, like, unrecognizable guys ever in the NBA? Yeah, I mean, for a team that just won an NBA Finals, they absolutely – dude, they're – one, people, everybody forgets this, that they are still the reigning yeah, champs of, the, of yeah. this league. And they literally are. Lowry, get, Lowry gets pretty disrespected. He, maybe because he's, like, a little bit on the heavier end. People don't think that he's – but he's, you know, he's big time for a point guard. And then Fred Van Fleet, super underrated. Super, super underrated. Aside from Lowry, like, really, you don't hear about anyone – yeah, as Siakam, I, see, Siakam's their best player, and he doesn't get. Yeah, and maybe maybe it's because they're in Canada too. I don't I don't know. I don't know why they get the uh, disrespect that they get. Even Marcus All, like he's been around for a while now. He's been doing this thing for a long time, and uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I feel like I feel like you're right, Ben. They do I feel like like if the Celtics lose to this team, I'm gonna be like, like who are all these bums that just beat the Celtics? Because like, who are they? like. Mm. It's just that's fair. That is that is fair enough for a for someone like you. You're what on the average night you're watching Fernando Tatis instead of an NBA game. For yeah. me, I'm gonna be I'm gonna know who those guys are. Yeah, but yeah, for the average NBA fan, like yeah, they 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 don't have the most uh, the name the big name guys. And I know I know like most of the publicity that the average NBA fans or the casual NBA fans are getting, all of that goes to LeBron, Kawhi. Um, you know, and all the drama stories, you know, James Harden and everything. Uh, but still, like like you said, they're still the reigning champs. You think, yeah. like, they would – I just – the team's just not built a, in a way that other teams are built. Like, it's not a super team by any means. And it's just a well-rounded team, but there's really no big guys except for, you know, Kyle Lowry is the most recognizable guy in that team, I think. Yeah, yeah. he is. But go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was just going to say, in case anyone was wondering why I was making faces, I'm watching the Bruins in the background, and Tampa just scored to go take a 3-2 lead with eight minutes to – or, like, about nine minutes to go. Hey, all the Bruins need are eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that's about that's not good. I was I was hoping that you'd, like, inter- interject at some point with just a scream because we scored, but mm, yeah, that's unfortunate. Not, not what happened. Um, but, yeah, Benny. I like the Raptors. I like what they did. They're a, they're a very solid team without a superstar. They're a very deep team. We had an extensive conversation about roster construction yesterday, and I feel like they follow kind of like a Tampa Bay Rays type model. They have a ton of solid players. Their bench scored 100 points. And I think a lot of people aren't talking about them and are discounting them because they lost their best player. Yeah. You know, you lose the best player for a championship team, and now it's like you just have a bunch of role guys. But it's almost a throwback to kind of old school basketball, right? Where you have a bunch of guys who know their roles, play unselfishly, run good offense, play hard defense, and and they play with the chip on their shoulder. And I, you know, yeah. 
if somebody has to come out of the East and it's not the Celtics, I want it to be Toronto. No, a hundred percent. If I'm not, if I'm not a Celtics fan, if I'm not, you know, if, if I'm not rooting for the Celtics through and through, I want the Raptors to win because I, I'm tired of hearing about all the super teams. I'm tired of hearing LeBron recruit his own guys and get rid of guys he doesn't want. I want just a well-rounded team to go out there and win. And, you know, last year they won, but they had Kawhi. So every all the tenders on Kawhi. Imagine if they win this year and it's just like just a great team. They could change how NBA teams are built. That's what I was going to say. It would change the face of the NBA, which has gone to you need three stars to win a championship. It would cause a lot of teams to kind of reconsider a roster construction, yeah. like you said. It would cause a lot of, you know, probably high-end players or like borderline max contract players are probably like, oh, this is not good right now. If they're showing that, you know, you can win with a group of, you know, mid-level, mid-tier players. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough matchup. I like the Celtics. I think our wings match I up. do, too. And, I, I mean, we're hot right now, too. Yeah, very hot. But so is Toronto. True. So, I mean, from a, from a team that doesn't really have one guy who takes all the attention to one guy who probably takes away more attention from what I think is a really good supporting cast and doesn't get any credit, Luca. Mm, what yeah. a performance. His what a shot performance. was unbelievable. Just all the way down the stretch, he was he was playing big time, big time basketball. And then yeah, like you said, that step back buzzer beater for the win, fading to his left. Ooh, ooh, did you see did you see the video that went somewhat viral of before that happened? Uh they were drawing up the play and he's there on the sidelines just flipping a water bottle like a kid in mm-hmm. a kid in like high school lunch. Like, the dude wasn't even paying attention to the play, and he just goes out there and makes a game-winning shot. Like, <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, like, I don't know, like, what he was – like, he obviously, he was legit zoned off, but, like, clearly the play was get it to Luca at the top of the key and let, let him make something happen. You know what? You know what he was doing? He was what? acting like the actual 21-year-old 21, 21 he is. You're right. I always <laughs> He's only 21 things. years old. I, I know. Weird. He's, I'm older than him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. I hate that. that must make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting in the basement <laughs> right now watching a game, recording a podcast, and he's making millions of dollars hitting fadeaway threes to win games. Yeah. I mean, Man. it's a hell of a podcast, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're giving him a real good run for his money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, watching – like, I, I wasn't watching it live, and I know Robbie texted us and was like, are you guys seeing this? And I was like, no. And he goes, just search him on Twitter. And I did. And just video after video of, you know, step backs or, you know, he's driving to the middle, making threes, just doing everything right. And and then, you know, every sports show, every podcast is talking about him the next day. Just the fact that he's only 21 years old, he's going out there. I mean, who, who in the right minds would trade that guy away? No one, no one. He's, he's untouchable. The Hawks traded him. Yeah, 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 but that was before. I mean. Oh, no, and uh, like, all right, you guys, you guys, you guys are gonna chastise me for this, but like, don't. Trey Young is nothing to cry at. Trey Young, Trey Young no, is gonna great. be an all star. He's, great, but he's after, gonna be an all star in this league for the next, the next just fifteen would, years, in my opinion. Didn't they trade up to get Trey though, or did they trade down? I think they like it was like a swap, like Luca for Trey, but I think they went up to get Trey ahead of. That's, Awful. So Trey's I'm also talking, 21. You could be kicking yourself right now. If you could have had Trey Young, you traded up to avoid to avoid Doncic to get Trey. Yeah, but if 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 Luca was on the on this Hawks team, he'd be sitting he'd be sitting outside the bubble right now. And if you put Trey on the Mavs, I I believe that him with Kristaps Trey Burke, who is yeah. unbelievable, I believe yeah. that they're they're in a similar position that they're in. I, All right, I think, fair enough. That's fine. I, I don't like the disrespect that Trey Young gets. And it's going to be hard being compared to Luca for his whole career. He was but, uh, he was our pick to win the three point contest. Who Trey? Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. talked about that in uh, the radio studio. Yeah, that I forgot about that. Yeah, and I mean, so yeah, I missed we missed that pick because he didn't win. You want to hear about another pick that I missed? And Matt, me and Matt, I think both have like a confession to make. The Bla- we after game one of the Blazers Lakers series, you know, we were really in. Oh, guys, come on! Like I posted the it's just, it's I posted two, the clip. It's two posted, one. Yeah, it's still possible, but I posted the clip, and as soon as it was on the Instagram and Twitter feed, it was like Lakers just blowing them out. 
Never Dude, they were better. they were down like forty at one point. <laughs> yeah, LeBron, yeah. LeBron is back to playoff LeBron. I'm he's afraid old. so. He's old. Yeah, he's old, but he's, he's still long series. He's elite. He's still elite. I'm not saying he's not elite. I'm just saying he's old. Listen, I'm yeah, not gonna back old. away. He's I've never been one to back. <laughs> I've never been one to back away from a pick. I'm gonna stick with I I like I said, I don't think the Blazers I didn't say I don't think the Blazers will win, but I said I don't know that they'll win, but I know they'll give him a series, and I still think they'll give him a series. I think the Blazers take care in game four. You know what? I'm I'm a little fed up because that's that's I'm 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 super stubborn. So after game one, I was like, all right, game two, we're throwing fifty bucks in the Blazers to cover the spread. Seven point spread, they lose by eight. I was like, okay. Okay, <laughs> like that's that hurts. That hurts a lot. But I'm gonna throw another fifty on him for game three. And I wasn't watching the game. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Ruth scored everyone. If you're wondering, three three. Let's go three three, baby. How's How much time ball? left? Four minutes. Three fifty eight. Let's <laughs> go. I think that, yeah. Yep, the perfection line out there, taking care of business, baby. Marshy, make a play. I apologize to all listeners who were probably just like through their phones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's energy. a big reaction. You got that's the energy we need here. Yeah, that oh, was absolutely. Incredible. That was unbelievable hockey. Yeah. That was a beautiful thing. Pasta, who is that? Pasta to Bergy to Marshawn. That's just, I, you can't draw it off, dude. There's just the, the in front Bruins, of the net and kicked it back out. The Bruins are on fire. I love the Bruins. Feed me Halak. Feed me the Bruins. Are we good on NBA? Can we? Can we? Yeah, we're good on NBA. Let's let's talk. Let's talk bees. I mean, we're we're talking bees now. Let's just talk. Let's talk. Let's talk bees. I hate to cut off the NBA talk, but no, we're pretty much done anyway. I'm, dude. I'm fired up right now. Just tied it up. Just handled Carolina. Made Carolina look like nothing. They are nothing. They have no business even being in the bubble playing us. (laughs) <laughs> but I always said we'll never win with Halak. We'll never win with Tuca as our goalie. Yeah, you say it all the time. Halak comes in. I don't want to say anything, but we don't have Tuca right now. Not okay. I said, we'd not never, we'd ne- I said we'd never win with Tuca. Yeah, we don't have Tuca right now. I don't want to jinx anything, but connect those dots for me right there. After you beat the Lightning, game one, beat them bad. This, it was not as close as the score. Just you've been fighting back all night tonight, baby. Four less than four minutes ago, you tie it up. I'm excited. All right. Not to take anything away from the Bruins, but the Lightning are notorious for not making playoff runs. I also hate the Lightning. They are, like, everything about them, dude. They're so soft. That's, like, their thing. They're, like, these, like, skill players, like, super fast, not physical players, and they run into the Bruins, and the Bruins are obviously, like, big, bad Bruins. Like, they're Mm -hmm. notorious. Like, they have a great four check, like, all, like, whole nine yards with that stuff. You know, physical forwards. Very physical defense, and you can kind of bully them around. It's just a clash of styles, and those two teams don't like each other. Going all the way back to Marshy licking them in 2018, people forget mm-hmm. about that. He literally licked some dudes during a playoff series. Can't do that this year. No, cannot do that. We <laughs> get thrown out of the bubble. He could go down for murder if he does that this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tempted um, murder. Tempted murder. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm excited about the Bruins. I'm excited about Boston right now. I mean, playoff hockey. We say it every show. We t- we talk about hockey. There's nothing better. But this yeah. Bruins team is taking that to a whole nother level. They're so fun to watch with all the late comebacks. I mean, they're just a great overall team. A great mix of some young guys and some veterans that everyone knows and loves. I mean, it's everything you can ask for. It really is. And you you hit the nail on the head. You got a young guy. You got your pastas and all those guys. And then you got your your veterans. You got your marshies and your burgies. The captain, 40-something. No, what is he, like 38? Chara? He's old. He's, he's 40, in his 40s. 43. 43. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Let's just think about that. He's 6, like 8, 43. No one talks about that. The, no one talking yeah. about Brady being old, and I know Brady's winning, you know, every year, basically. But, I mean, Chara, he's still, like, a scary guy. And he might oh, just yeah. be standing there. He might just be standing there now, but I'd still he, be scared. Of him. He pretty much is just standing there. He's somewhat of a liability. Yeah. I hate to say it, but. No, he is. I mean, but still, he's still, he's still, going. He's still going. Guys, guys, not to uh, not to get ahead of myself or anything, but like, you think they'll just postpone the parade so that we can go, or you think they'll just cancel it completely? Interesting, interesting. I think they might postpone it. Could you imagine if they postpone it? That you know what they'll do? Crazy. They'll do like a virtual watch party of them like celebrating, but they have to have a parade at some. You point. imagine in like the first weekend of March, like 
the seat, the streets of Boston and just filled for a Bruins parade. <laughs> so I, I guarantee if they win, I mean, it's going to end up bad. There's going to be people in the streets. I'll be in the streets. Actually, I shouldn't say that out loud. You should not. Matt's not going to be in the streets. Yeah, Matt, Matt. Hey, Matt, off the record, Ben and I, off the record, Ben and I will Uber up to see you that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> completely off the record. Yeah, completely off the record. We'll all be at, at, at Logan Airport to greet them off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll cut that part out. Yeah. Yeah. Little snip, snip. Yeah. No. I mean, really though, like realistically, are they the favorites to win? No. 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 You, without without Tuca, so like, for me, like I'm like without Tuca, I love it, but that's kind of a hot take. Most people are like, he's a Vesna Trophy winner. Like he's a very good goalie. Yeah. They're not as good when they have to play their backup, which is probably you know for a hockey like person's perspective probably true vegas looks unbelievable well there's uh, a great team a, what's up there's a great team yeah they're unbelievable they put up a five spot on vancouver last night um and pitched a shout out all at the same time so that was they're good that would be a, a tough matchup um, i you know i like the golden knights too i think you know i i love the fact that they're in vegas i thought when they broke on to the when the expansion team came to life i was you know i when I was watching hockey, I was either watching the Bruins or the Golden Knights. There you go. And we have, uh, you know, Jack Dugan got drafted by them. PC hockey Got drafted player. by the Golden Knights? Yeah. That's our boy, man. All right. If you're going to plug if you're gonna plug PC, I got to plug BC. Alex Tuck pointing a goal last night. Uh, goal and an assist last night for Vancouver. He's actually He's playing. There you go. Uh, not Vancouver. I'm sorry. I didn't mean Vancouver. I meant Vegas. BC guy lighting it up up there he's been on fire in the bubble but so who's your who's your pick to win to win it all right now i don't want to say you don't want to say i don't want to jinx anything so you're gonna say the, the bruins then i don't want to jinx anything all right fair enough good answer i'll i'll straight up jinx us and i'll say the bruins are gonna win the stanley cup we might not lose another game on the way there either <laughs> as you said that a guy just ripped a shot from the point <laughs> They just caught us mid change. This is yeah, that would have been something if they scored as I was saying that. Yeah, or if the maybe, lightning score. I would, I would have stopped. I would have left it. I would have left the zoom. Well, let's not <laughs> let's not do anything else to jinx because we we want a parade. To, totally that we won't be at. Um, yes. That we'll watch on TV from the safety of our dorm rooms. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> safety of our dorms. How dumb does it sound? <laughs> it's so bad, but like, it's true. No, it is. It re- it actually it genuinely is like. But like, you bring up an interesting point. To? No matter who wins, parades are such a huge part of celebrating and interacting with the fans. And obviously, it's something that can't happen. With you know, there's millions or thousands, not millions. There's thousands and thousands of people at these parades. I mean, you see. I'm pretty sure that they get millions sometimes. No, really, they get millions. Oh yeah, you break millions for sure. Right. Yeah, you were right. You were right. Trust I thought, yourself. No, see, I thought so because I was thinking, you know, the Cubs parade. There was like a million people. Several oh yeah. Several million. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Boston. Sometimes we take a break because we just win so many. So it's not. Yeah, like, right. It's break. like I took I took off last week from work to go to the other parade. I can't go to that. <laughs> yeah. We go like ninety something days without a parade. Yeah, it was something like that, which was nuts. I mean, I I was dying for one. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, that's such a huge part of interacting with the fans and showing you know your appreciation for them. And now that's just something that can't happen. Like I wonder if there is gonna be like a, like a watch party. Literally, maybe we'll just get like a zoom into their locker room of them celebrating, which they probably would hate. But um, that would kind of be electric. It would be sick, but I don't think they'd be for it because that's kind of the time you get. You know, that's when Rick Porcello is yeah. diving naked into the 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 tub of beer. <laughs> he, did, he did do that. Yeah. Um, it so cold. But I just wonder. You know, Robbie mentioned maybe they'll delay it, or maybe it just maybe won't happen at all. That's something I'm looking forward to. Not well, I'm not necessarily looking forward because it could be bad. But I'm very interested to see what is going to happen with stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whoever wins and whoever has parades or. How, however, whoever wins championships and would have had a parade, how they go about that. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, if it's like a Florida team or something, like they're just no, parading. No yeah, other way. They're gone. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> if yeah. if Tampa Bay Lightning makes it, the you know all of Florida is gonna just be like, oh, that's an excuse. That. Don't they're even gonna, say that. They're not going to though, because they stink. <laughs> um, 
Speaking no, I mean, for- the- there's one, there's one sport uh, for that the Boston sports don't have to worry about a parade for, and I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to put it this way, yeah. but it's the Red Sox. Yeah, no, no, definitely, it's about to be a fire sale for the Red Sox. Uh, I think so in the trade deadline. Heim Bloom has said no one is off the table, but Xander Bogarts is very unlikely trade. Um, so that's good news, because wait, 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 wait. What about Devers? Is he yeah. on the table? He's on, everyone's on the table. Everyone's on the table. Oh. Scoops is on the table. Hold Honestly, on. though. I just turned on Siri. That's cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we – I don't really know what Heim's going to do. Heim Bloom, Jim, for the Red Sox. I, I, Matt and I had a huge argument about the roster construction and Heim Bloom's moves on text yesterday. And um, – he could go in one of two ways. They could just throw money at the problem and sign a lot of big guys, or he could do what I think is going to happen. And he's going to make a lot of small moves that don't look like they make sense, but he's going to build a serviceable roster. And in, in a year or two, they're going to be, you know, pretty above average guys. And then they'll use the money they saved and go sign some big names. That's what I no, think. I think you th- throw the money around now. Exactly. Well, see, so once exactly. we, August 31st, we hit the luxury tax uh, reset and the Red Sox get draft picks back. So that's the big reason why Mookie was gone was to save money and get under the luxury tax. Because everyone was complaining about, you know, the Reds, everyone was like, oh, the Red Sox have such a big amount of money. Why can't we just throw more money at Mookie? Well, it's because our farm system is literally one of the worst in baseball. Um, it's because everybody's on the roster now. Yeah, I know, but – other teams like Brian Cashman of the Yankees, the Yankees hasn't won World Series. I know that, but their roster is built better than any other roster in baseball right now. Them and the Dodgers. They're always have competitive. They, have the Dodgers won a World Series? No, they haven't. But they're always competitive and their farm systems are top notch and they're always winning division titles. So Red Sox have win one, then we're gonna be bad for like four years. And then we still don't get better in the farm system somehow. We just get a lot of good free agents. But so now the luxury tax resets before we refined and losing draft picks. Now that's a couple extra compensation picks we get to pick up. And that actually comes a lot when you have a guy like Heim Bloom who researches and gets the guys that aren't exactly top notch, but sometimes he does get top notch guys too. He, he, getting extra draft picks is going to be huge as well as saving money and being able to sign someone, hopefully like Trevor Bauer, which I don't think is going to happen, but someone like him. So here's my take is you trade Mookie to get under the luxury tax and everything resets. So now there's no reason to not go spend all your money. So if you trade Mookie, if you trade Mookie, so then you can sign Trevor Bauer and Marcus Stroman and a reliever this mm-hmm. offseason, I say, fine, maybe, you know, I'm not even going to say it was worth it to trade Mookie, but I live with it. But if you do that and then your big move is trading two relievers for Nick Pavetta, it's like – what? Well, He's made one like, move. He's made one okay, move. Okay, I get, I get it. It's one move. But I don't want a bunch of moves like that. That works in Tampa when you already have a solid core. We don't have the core where a little move here or there is going to – like that little tweak is going to get us to 90 wins. No, this team is such a dumpster fire no, right no, now. No, no, you're you wrong. Need you're to, wrong. You need you, – no, I'm not. Yes, Benny, you are. we have a good team, core. We have a good core. Benny, we've won nine games, and they showed that they don't care about keeping the core. They they traded one guy that was going to walk in free agency anyway. Right. They traded one guy who signed an extension with the team he got traded to because and, of COVID. And, and you know, and you know that they're going to trade other pieces of that core or let other pieces of that core walk. Yeah, they probably will okay. now. Yeah, but they also might not. I don't think we're going to be trading guys like Devers. And Bogarts. I think the only guy out of the so-called core that we're going to be trading is uh, Ben Intendi. I think he's the only one that's going to go. Chavis, Chavis Bradley. Maybe Chavis. Bradley's going to walk in. A, no one's going to want to sign Bradley anyway. Unfortunately, I hate to say Milwaukee. it. Milwaukee. No. Yeah, they need an outfielder. Maybe a trade, but they're not going to. It's going oh, to be that's hard. For, a trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be hard for Jackie Bradley Jr. to find a job or to get a return from him. He's yeah. not that good. Vasquez. Vasquez, I would hate to see go, but we I have other think. catchers. I mean, look, you know, it's just frustrating from a fan's perspective where it's like you go reset, and it, it, if he does what you think he's going to do in a bunch of little moves here and there, then there was no reason to trade Mookie Betts. If you trade Mookie Betts – No, I agree, but that's not Bloom's problem. 
because you foresee a problem in the future, you're like, we're going to need money to go sign free agents, then yeah. do that. No, that's a problem if from – trade, trade him and then you don't use the cap space that you just created – or the luxury tax base that you just created to go sign people, then you did it wrong and there's no excuse for that. Okay, but Heim Bloom got put in this situation. Dombrowski signed Sale and Navaldi, injury prone guys to big extensions, as well as, you know, other moves that cost the Red Sox a lot of money. They could have done that and Heim probably would have wanted to keep Mookie because who wouldn't want to keep a guy like that on your team? But ownership was forcing him to trade him. That's why we traded him. So now he's forced to go in this other direction that he probably would have went in a little bit. But, okay, forget about moves. Think about next year. Next year, hopefully, Chris Sale's healthy, back, healthy and back. Eduardo Rodriguez is back. That's questionable. It might, Yeah, it's questionable. But I'm, just think of the team on paper. You got those guys, hopefully a new manager who's going to actually get guys excited about playing baseball and not just give stupid quotes to the media like, yeah, we're not good. So you get a new manager. You get the guys back. The core actually performs, and then you have Haim making all the little moves, and now those guys become part of the equation. Now, not, now we have Devers, Bogarts, probably the guys are going to stay. JD is going to be other guys that are productive in their own areas. JD is going to be going. You're going to be looking for offense now too, because now pitching's questionable. Sales a question mark. He never stays healthy. Erod has myocarditis, which is a lifelong condition. Evaldi, question mark. Yeah. Martin Perez, electric, but not the guy you want leading a staff. No. And then you're going to lose J.D. in the offseason because he's going to opt out. And then you're going to be left with Xander and Everett, who are just going to while away and waste their talents unless they go sign people. Z- J.D. might not opt out. He's, he's not, not having that productive of a season. He's not going <laughs> to be able to get paid that much more. Yeah, but Gentlemen, do I need to interject? Yeah. <laughs> Shall we talk about someone who I like to refer to as Budweiser Bauer? Oh, my God. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Trevor Bauer and Budweiser had a little challenge. So, Sonny Gray had, like, 43, 45 strikeouts over his first five starts. Trevor Bauer was like, I'm going to beat it. Budweiser told him if he can get 14 strikeouts in his next two starts, they would make Cincinnati Buds, a limited edition Budweiser. I'm assuming that's going to be released in Cincinnati. Um, Safe bet. So Trevor Bauer, yeah, right, safe bet. Trevor Bauer goes out there, his first start, shoves nine Ks. That's not that many to get to 14 for the next start. So he goes out there. I watched it last night. Pretty cool. Every time he got a strikeout, until he got it, he would write, he wrote buds on the mound. So, you know, one strikeout, it's a B, so on, so yeah. on. So finally. That only gets him to 13 if, I, if my math is right, though. B-U-T-S. Well, Buds. however many he needed, he probably started it after he got one strikeout. Okay. But um, so he completes it, strikes the guy out after the S, writes the S, cracks open a virtual or not virtual, uh, pretend imaginary beer, chugs it on the mound. He gets buzzed for Cincinnati. Unfortunately, he also gave up four runs and was the losing pitcher of that game. I think he was a little too focused on striking guys out. But I think he had, like, 11 or 12 strikeouts. So, And he didn't walk a guy. So not a terrible start, but he did make him lose. He did lose the game. But still, I mean, come on. Electric stuff. That is electric. The guy's awesome. He's great for the game. He, he is. is. Looped in fans. Like, I'm a Red Sox fan first. Big baseball guy, but a Red Sox fan first. This is a season that under normal circumstances I would just check out. Mm-hmm. I haven't. I don't know the last time. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know the last time I watched a Red Sox game. But because of guys like Bauer and Tatis Jr., I'm now engaged with the league as a whole, which I think is huge. I think this baseball. year more than any any year I've been – I mean, I'm always a big baseball guy, but I think this year more than any, I'm – like you said, I'm involved in other guys. I'm following other guys. I think it's partly because there's really fun, exciting guys in the league, and other partly it's because guys like Trevor Bauer are being more vocal and going on social media. And it's exactly what the game needs. And it's very exciting, very fun. Trevor Bauer, Trevor, Trevor Bauer just put another vlog on his channel today, um, nice. probably talking about Cincinnati Buds. So I'm going to be watching that after we're done with this. Um, it's just good stuff. There's a lot of yeah. exciting baseball. I also I think it's I think it's I think it's good for the game that he's that he's a pitcher that's like 
that's doing this because it's it's for the most part at least from like what what i see is like they're all they're all position players but like for someone to be able to become like this uh this i guess marketable at this point he is he's one of the most no, well-known he, guys in the he does it he does it to himself when he right when he does switch he shows his shirt that says send it uh him throwing the ball over it he in his vlogs he talks about prior he shows it like a couple days prior and he's like yeah, I'm going to wear this shirt on the mound. Probably going to be a viral moment, you know, so that'll be good for me. He plans it out and knows it. Not many guys don't do that. A lot of guys like Tatis are just fun and exciting, and they're just going to do exciting stuff on the regular. Guys like Trevor Bauer are out there thinking of how he can make himself more marketable, not only for him, but what's also going to get fans excited about baseball. So in, in the long run, he's helping baseball as a whole, or not even in the long run, just in the short run, but he's also helping himself. And people don't like that necessarily because they think it's a selfish thing, but he's got, he's got greater um, aspirations and bigger picture stuff in mind when he's doing all of it. Yeah. Can we talk about his cleats that MLB didn't let him wear? Yeah. Come on. Free. So his, he had cleats that he was prepared to wear on a start that said free Joe Kelly on them. Cause you know, Joe Kelly is suspended for throwing up the Astros and initiate. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Um, Commissioner shuts it down, says he can't do that. He's going to be ejected if he wears them. So he doesn't wear them. Um, yeah, he was like, super mad about that, talked about it, uh, very vocal about everything normally, but very vocal about that. And that's just ridiculous. After saying you can wear anything on your cleats as long as it's not offensive or political, none of that was offensive or political. He's literally just promoting the game and making people excited to watch baseball. And Rob Manfred goes, nope, not today. I think Manfred needs to do a better job of recognizing the value of a villain. Mm. Like, create, like, look at what the Patriots being great has done for the NFL. It has inspired 31 other fan bases to hate the Patriots. And you'll literally get people that hate watch games where they'll be like, I just hope the Patriots get crushed and put the game on. People are doing that right now with Houston. Like, you have a villain. You know, look at the NBA in the 80s. You had uh, the Pistons, right, the late 80s, the bad boys. Market your villains. You have a villain right now. This is something that's going to get people talking. Get them talking. Get them, get them talking. Let people, let players trash on the Astros. You know, I get you have to protect your players, but recognize the value that there is in, in yeah. you know, Couldn't agree more. in marketing this this way. Couldn't agree more. Did you guys, uh, did you guys see the video of, uh, of the Astros leaving the ballpark on the, like on the buses and the dude yeah. out there with the broom? Mm-hmm. That was great. That was incredible. And fans are doing more stuff like that. I mean, it happens a lot, but it's getting more attention because they can't go to the games. So they're doing a lot of stuff like that, and it's pretty fun, pretty funny. That really was. Yeah. I got a good kick out of it. <laughs> I got it, too. It was, it was great. I um, hope Altuve did, too. You know, I like – I still – it breaks my heart oh, that no. Altuve is getting all this hate. He should be. He was wearing buzzers and Gavin trash can bang. I don't. I. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think he was wearing it buzzers. So it sounds so outrageous when you say it. Like I don't that. think he was wearing buzzers. Benny, <laughs> did you see him? He's covering it up. I don't think it's a tattoo. He had a bad tattoo. I don't believe that. For Jason Tatum has a bad tattoo, and he's not going like this every time he hits a shot. Jason Tatum likes his bad tattoo. Yeah, fair. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just think. I mean, I agree. They, the Houston Astros should be the villains. But, I mean, people forget that a lot of their success was because of pitching, and their pitchers aren't stealing signs or anything. And they're still, at the end of the day, they're still Major League Baseball players, and they're still great hitters. And a lot of other great hitters this year are struggling. Like, J.D. Martinez has hit, like, what, two home runs? Normally he hits, like, I mean, only, what, they're, like, what, 30-something games left? He would have hit like 15, 20 by now. He's hit like two. So there's a lot of great hitters hitters struggling. And I agree they need to get hate. And it, they're, it's good for the game for them to be villain. But I just don't think people should be hating as much as they are. I mean, listen, I was by no means a great hitter. But I know I would have been a heck of a lot better if I knew what pitches were coming. Yeah, no, I agree. And I like, agree. Yeah, they had good pitching. But, you know, you look at, uh, you know, that, that 20, what was it, 17 World Series. Those games are all shootouts. Oh, yeah. Those games, there were a lot of runs. Their pitchers got lit up. Yeah. And then they would always answer because, you know. No, I agree. I just think – Go ahead, Ben. I just think, you know, right now it's come out 
you have evidence of the Yankees doing very similar stuff. And, you know, the Red Sox have been accused of cheating. I just think, you know, everyone needs to come to terms that everyone in the league is doing it. So just let it go. Not to the extent that Houston and the Yankees are, though. No, I agree. I agree. But, I There's mean, hopefully that's shut down. But no one's hating on the Yankees. So do you just want more people to hate on the Yankees? Kind of. I mean, did you see the video? Okay. There, there, there was a camera in center field directed right at the catcher. Yeah, it's bad. And I think there, were, there might have been audio, too. But, I mean, whatever. It's all right. Do the Astros still have Verlander? He's, he's injured right now, but, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, he's sitting at home with Kate Upton. Yeah. Be. Yeah, not a bad place to be. Not a bad place to be, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, trade deadline's coming up for the MLB. Uh, so, should be a lot of interesting trades and moves. There's already a couple going down. Uh, but, yeah, that's all I got for the MLB. Red Sox still stink. They're losing right now, I think. Um, Thank so. you, Trevor. Tank Matt, for Bruins in overtime? Yeah, they are. Tank for Trevor Lawrence. Tank for Trevor Lawrence. Halak just made a great Whoa. save. Oh, the Red Sox are winning. No, really? Nine to six, top of the ninth. Let's Double go. Low. Wow. Hey, let's bring in uh, uh, Workman. Oh, wait. I stopped. Well, we traded Workman. I know. That's why I said, oh, wait. Hey, we don't, we don't want him. He has pitched like two appearances and gave up like six runs for the Phillies. Blown both saves. Wow. Bad. Bad. You know, I don't think he's given up any runs is for the Red Sox is Nick Pavetta. So, looks like we will not trade. He hasn't pitched yet, but you're, you're – right That was that. the joke. Yeah. You're right about that. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so Red Sox might pull out a win here. Um, and Bruins, hopefully. Hopefully. Listen, it's overtime now. We're in sudden death. If uh, if something happens here, you'll know about it. Yeah, so exciting time to be a Boston sports fan. Uh, you guys got anything else you want to talk about real quick? I'm good. Yeah, me too. Um, well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, I think it was a pretty good show today. Pretty good. Some funny moments, yeah. hopefully. Uh, so hope you all enjoyed. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Blotti here with Robbie Cannon and Matt Marasco. We'll catch you.